What the fuck? 2,000 years ago, an island's discovered. In the middle of it, a bottomless hole full of valuable mysterious artifacts. Humans being the greedy opportunistic bastards they are, decide to set up shop around the seemingly endless supply of treasure, establishing a town along the edge of the ominous void and building a society which revolves around unveiling the secrets of the abyss next to them. Everything in the town functions around the common goal of exploration. The citizens are subject to a sort of class system. Newbie adventurers are given red whistles which only let them go down 500 meters deep into the abyss. If a red whistle goes deeper than that, search parties are sent to bring them back. But if they go below 1300 meters, it's treated as a suicide and the searches are called off. On the opposite end of the spectrum are the white whistles, legendary divers whose findings in the abyss are written into history no questions asked and who are seen as the highest level of humanity. With a white whistle, you can go down as deep as you want, and a lot of them end up going missing trying to reach the mythical bottom of the abyss. But what makes the giant hole in the ground so dangerous. Well, the hard part isn't going down, it's actually coming back up, like an old person on the stairs. As soon as you drop into the abyss, trying to get back up to the surface will have serious consequences on your body, which only get worse the deeper you go. Ascending from the first layer causes mild dizziness, the second gives you nausea, headaches, and turns you into a drunk college girl. From the fourth layer on, you start bleeding out of every hole in your body, and finally, going past the sixth layer causes you to completely lose your humanity, disfiguring your body and making you go completely brain dead, kinda like making a Twitter account. These universal symptoms are referred to as the curse of the abyss, which kills many of the divers who go down to try to make their mark on history. The ascension sickness isn't the only thing you've gotta worry about though. To die from the curse, you actually have to make it to the hole, going back up to the surface part. Exploring the abyss is made hard by the fact that each of its layers are home to a variety of dangerous plants and animals that only seem to get smarter and more deadly the deeper you go. From a bird that eats people and mimics its Praise cries for help to learn more food to a big ass poisonous porcupine that literally predicts your fucking movements. The wildlife down in the abyss is just a giant fuck you to all the people trying to uncover its mysteries. Is this shit reminding anyone else of the ocean? Suffering more the further down you go, crazy ass undiscovered creatures all trying to kill you? Man, the ocean's a scary place. Fuck the ocean. Anyway, all this makes death an incredibly common occurrence around town. So common, in fact, that orphanages are set up to take in all the newly abandoned kids. And so some of these orphanages even teach the kids how to become explorers themselves. Rico's a 12 year old orphan with dreams of becoming a legendary explorer. The entire reason for the anime taking place is that a letter is found in the abyss from Rico's mom, one of the famous white whistles. It tells her to come down and meet her at the bottom of the abyss. The problem with this is that Rico's mom's presumably been dead for around 10 years, but Rico doesn't care at all, so she sets off on a borderline suicide mission to reunite with the mother she hasn't seen in a decade. I'm not gonna lie, for the first couple episodes, episodes, I really couldn't stand Rico. She's a major squeaker. Every couple sentences, she just starts screaming, and the sound of her voice made me irrationally angry for some reason. But as the show went on, she started growing on me. She's your typical, pure, energetic kid character. She also gets tossed around like a ragdoll for half the series. Luckily, she wears glasses, which by anime logic makes you intelligent. So in her abyss group of two, she's the brains of the operation, calling out random facts about the wildlife that she learned from the orphanage and always keeping calm under pressure. She uses her creativity and problem solving to make up for the fact that she's built like a q-tip and actually manages to be an important part of her group. The other half of the duo is Reg, a robot with amnesia who's completely immune to the curse of the abyss, can't really bleed out of your ass if you don't have one. He's the muscle of the group, being pretty much indestructible, having extendable arms which makes descending into the abyss easy, and did I mention that he has a fucking cannon built into his arms? Reg spends his time in the series saving Rico's dumbass from certain death over and over Whenever there's any action in the show, 90% of the time it's gonna have something to do with Reg in some way. Speaking of which, most of the action in the anime is short and sweet. At its core, it's a show about exploration and the childish ignorance of our main characters clashing with a dangerous, unforgiving environment. The show's at its peak when it's in survival and discovery mode. Each layer of the abyss has a completely different environment, its own creatures, and a lot of ways for the duo to die. Made in Abyss is great because the world doesn't feel like it revolves around the characters like in other anime. These actually feel like two kids picked up and dropped off in the wilderness. They're foreigners in the abyss, thousands of feet away from their comfort zones, struggling to survive day to day. Everything I like about the show mostly goes back to the creativity put into making it. The concept's something I've never seen, and that's incredibly refreshing considering the sheer amount of soulless, derivative, mass-produced shit that the anime industry pumps out every season. At a certain point, it all starts blurring together, and seeing something that paves its own path 
succeed is amazing. This is an anime that actually deserves a video game adaptation, unlike all the dog shit shonen and isekai games. Like imagine if some boring vapid shit like Konosuba got a video game. I'd buy it just to break the disc in half and shove it up my ass. Uh, cut that part out the video. Cut it up. Made in Abyss also has a banging soundtrack, which manages to convey different emotions throughout the series and gives the scenes life. It's almost Zelda quality, which in my opinion some of the highest praise a soundtrack can get. Now uh, moving on to the things I don't like. Made in Abyss suffers from a heavy case of anime weirdo syndrome. This isn't a show you're gonna be able to watch in public. I am not a fan of this anime's art style. It's kids. The anime's art style is just kids. Which makes it really fucking weird, the fact that Rico can't go more than a couple episodes without finding some reason to get undressed. And not even discreetly, the anime just goes full frontal for whatever reason. Which I mean, why? There's also a stupid recurring joke with the robot having a human dick, which combined with the art style is so fucking unsettling. I felt like such a loser sitting there and watching this shit during some scenes. But those are just minor critiques, no pun intended. While I might be a hater of the show's character design, I can also concede that it's necessary for building the whole atmosphere of two little kids exploring a world in which they're relatively powerless. They're just prey. They aren't your usual broken ass wish fulfillment character. You know, minus the fucking arm cannon. Made in Abyss isn't a world you'd want to live in. I hate orphans. I also found the show to drag a little in the middle, but just as it started getting played out, it took a turn and the brutality ramped up 10 times, which I hope is the tone that the show keeps for season 2. To wrap things up, Made in Abyss is a show that at a first glance looks like some boring baby shit, but if you give it a chance, it takes you on an unforgettable adventure into an insane world full of high stakes, danger, and best of all, pretty well written characters. Wait, you guys are still here? Well shit, in that case, a couple of you guys asked me for a discord, so I set one up, and it's gonna be kinda sad if it's only like me and 5 other people, so join up and you can make fun of my thumbnails while I make them, and who knows, you might even make some friends. Also, throughout the month of January, I'll be giving everyone that joins the server the 1.0 tag, which just shows that you've been messing with me since the beginning. The link's in the description, and thanks for 1k. Big things are gonna happen in 2022, believe that. <laughs>